business programs to help you grow your company. Mm -hmm. So they look at it, they'll look at all these, this, the scope of work of all these contracts, and they'll say, okay, we can set aside this type of work to a small disadvantaged business because the requirements are not crazy technical and all that. So they actually do an evaluation and say, okay, this can go into 8A program, this can go to veterans, this can go to people who live in a, who are hub zone certified. And so they set those contracts aside because they have a memorandum of agreement with the small, small business administration. Gotcha. So that's the partnership. Yeah. Um, and so now what it is is that it gives you a higher chance to compete and win government contracts when you're part of those different small business programs. So that's, you know, people like to talk about the 8A program and, you know, they'll, they'll first get started in government contracts. I'm going after 8A and I'm like, no. Welcome back to another day in my tech life episode. My name is Simone B, also known as Bees, and today we have a very special guest. This is Fox Wade. He has his own IT government contracting company, and not just any government contracting company. You're winning eight-figure contracts, and you're winning prime contracts as well in helping other people become subs to your company and helping them get prime contracts too. So welcome on to the series. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I think it's been like a long time overdue right <laughs> yeah yeah definitely because I, I reached yeah. out to you like sometime last summer because i you know people i've been telling people for a while you know i want to start my own government contracting company mm -hmm. right you know just been trying to figure it out and for me i've i've learned over time that anything that you want to do you need to go to the best of the best like don't try to figure it out on your own don't try to, hey, you know what, I'm going to start and then if it don't work, I'm going I'm to I'm just keep going. Just go straight to the top, learn from the best, and it's going to allow you to grow way faster. So that's why I reached out to you and had a consultation with you before. So, you know, what made you get into government contracting and like how did you get into tech in the first place? <laughs> um, I'm one of those people to where like I literally probably slipped on a banana and fell in it. Yeah. <laughs> and so my journey started with, um, I joined the military at 18. What um, branch? Army. Okay. And, you know, most people think that I'm like this patriot or whatever. And I'm like, I ain't no patriot. Yeah. I literally, I was homeless at the time. Mm. And so I was like, I had these scholarships to go to college, go play ball. But I'm like, it was so foreign and it was actually scary to be like, you're going to go to college, you're going to play ball. And I'm like, I've never even kind of left my hometown that way. Where are you from? Uh, raised in Flint, Michigan. Okay. And so, like, um, so I'm, you know, looking at the options. So I said, okay. Uh, one, a friend of mine, he was like, hey, I'm joining the Air Force. And I was like, hmm, I didn't think about that. And so I went to the Air Force and tried to um, apply whatever. Took the ASVAB. Mm -hmm. My scores was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. They were like, I said, so, you know, what? There's, I said, what are the positions that I can get in the Air Force? It was like a cook. Ugh. And I was like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Right, right. <laughs> and so I went over to the Navy, and they were like, are you a strong swimmer? I was like, I can't swim. And it was like, well, you may, you, you'll may, you be fine. You may drown a little. I was like, what? what? Yeah. All right, we're not going to do that. Right, so right. So went over to the Marine Corps, um, walked in that office. Everybody had shaved heads, no facial hair, yeah. no eyebrows. They're <laughs> no like, eyebrows. yeah, you, you ready to go? And I was like, yeah, we're not going to do that either. <laughs> so I went over to the Army, and I was like, listen. You know, I'm looking to join, you know, and I was like, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be an engineer, you know, because I was kind of good at breaking down stuff in my head and systems and, you know, putting stuff together with my hands. Mm -hmm. And so I like, cool. I took the ASVAB. I think I scored like a 93 or 82 or something like that. It was, it was bad. It was not high. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, we still make you an engineer. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to be an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> they made me a combat engineer. Oh, okay. So it was like infantry, yeah. combat engineer. Yeah. <laughs> You're like one level up. And so, you know, I go to that, whatever. Um, and then this is in 2000. 2001 happens. And then we all know what happened, 9-11. Mm. And then I found myself in Afghanistan, U Uzbekistan, and then Afghanistan during that. And then next thing you know, going to 82nd Airborne. I lived in Europe for almost 10 years okay. um, in the first ID over there. And just going back in those rotations to Iraq and Afghanistan, and then eventually, um, I got a little bit smart, and I said I want to go on the special operations side. Okay. And so I was going to go Green Tab, you know, uh, special special forces, 
but um, I read up on civil affairs. Mm -hmm. So it's still special ops, it's just a different capacity, meaning right. that you still go out and do a mission, but you get the opportunity to hang out at the U.S. Embassy. <laughs> yeah, that like, makes yeah. sense. So I'm embassy, like, embassy, that's where I want to be at. So right. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> for longevity wise, I probably need to go here. So I right. went through that, went through the selection, and this is a similar process going special forces. You go through a selection process, go to language school, you you know do all that. So I was pretty, you know, gun ho, airborne, sapper. I went to sapper school, um, did all that, and then one day, um, well, prior to that, I had got injured in the military too. So I had mm. got. I got shot in the back in Western Iraq. But, wow. you know, being stubborn, I recovered, came, went back into the fight. Because, you know, when you're kind of dedicated to a cause, right. you're like, I'm going to keep going. One day I jumped from a plane and I hit the ground and I stood up and my body was like, nah, you need to sit back down. Mm. And I fell back down and I was just like, yeah, it's probably time to, like, do something different. Right. Started researching, pushed Pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. Got a P3 profile in the military. Mm. And they were like, so you want to medically retire? I was like, you know. What's a P3 profile? P3 profile is like, you can't really do anything. Oh. You can't deploy. Yeah. You know, I couldn't jump from planes no more. I had yeah. I terminated my jumps. That I was like, yep, I'm done. And so that's when the Army, uh, the military look at you like, you're like, damn yeah. good. Right, right. <laughs> but I was playing the game. I knew what it, uh -huh. what it was all about. But, you know, when I consultant, once again, asking questions, somebody was like, you can get 100%, yeah. you know, from the, from the United States Army and the Department of Veteran Affairs if you medically retire. And I was like, okay. So yeah. I went through the whole process, medically retired, um, got out. Oh, well, during that process, I went on and knocked out my undergraduate degree um, in emergency and disaster management. And then I knocked out my MBA because I'm like, you know, the military gonna pay for it. Yeah, it's all free. Why not go ahead and do it, right? And I did an accelerated program on my MBA where I did it in 12 months. Okay. I just went like every day because I'm like, hey, I'm getting out the military. Yeah, like, yeah. Leave me alone. Right. You know, like, <laughs> let me just go to this. I'll take, I took a class every single day and I just knocked it out in 12 months. Okay. And so that was kind of like the journey into it. So, and then after that, um, I started working, you know, a few different jobs and I ended up landing at FEMA. Okay. Yep. Kind of knew somebody at FEMA, military veteran. He was like, I can get you a job. So I was got out the military, living in Atlanta, and then got the job at FEMA in D.C., and that's kind of how I ended up in the DMV area. Gotcha. Uh, worked at FEMA, and my job was grants program director. So I would sign off on grants, mm -hmm. and I would sign off on contracts from time to time. One particular contract came across my desk, and this is how I got into government contracting. Mm -hmm. One particular contract came across my desk, and it was to install smoke detectors in low-income family homes in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. $2.7 million for two years. Wow. And so I'm reading the scope, and I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. Y'all paying me $80,000 a year? Right. I got to be in traffic. I got, you know, I, I, my ki I got to drop my kids off at daycare and, you know, miss certain things, and I'm about to sign off on a... So I went to my manager and I said, how do we even know they're actually doing this? Mm -hmm. And the response was, we don't. We just get reports and they just tell us. I was like, went back to my desk. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. I resigned. Oh, really? Right that day, there. Or that night, I resigned. Wow. I resigned. So you, you just decided to just up and resign right there. Resign. And I was like, the plan is I am going to launch my own company. Okay. So... That's how you decided to launch your own company, but what made you decide to do IT? So, um, when, I was, when I was at FEMA, mm -hmm. um, I had learned, um, learned about, well, my degree is in emergency and disaster management. You know, right. That's FEMA's mission. And so, I was on the Department of Labor's website and I was looking at you know, different jobs, because mm -hmm. I was like, emergency managers don't make a lot of money. Right. And I was looking, it was like 40K a year, 60. Oh, wow. You know, and it's more a local jurisdiction. I was like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And so Department of Labor has something on there called, you know, bright jobs, meaning like these are high in demand and it had business continuity on it. And I was like, business continuity? I've never heard of that before. Did some research. I found the Disaster Recovery Institute International, DRI, they call them DRI. And they had a certification and it's a, a global certification. And it was like $2,500 to take the... Um, 
the course and then you, to get certified. And I was like, I ain't got that money. Right. Did some more digging. They had a military veteran scholarship that you can apply for. Right. I did that right up. <laughs> Purple Heart recipient, Bronze Star Medal. And it was like, you've been awarded the grant to participate in the class. So yeah. I did the class, got certified. And then my first contract was business continuity, but it was IT systems. Okay. So I was kind of sweating a little bit because I'm like, I'm not in IT. Like, right. what is this? But my brain was like, slow down. You understand how to connect the dots and systems. What is the need? Oh, they have this system. If it shuts, if there's a fire or uh, active shooter mm -hmm. or something happens, they want a plan in place to be able to that system to function. Right. And I was like, oh, okay, got it. So that's why we kind of start working on remote stuff, mm -hmm. IT packages to be able to, you know, be able to be at your desk in the office. But if you're not at your desk in the office, you're at home and that data transition over. So we were, I, I was configuring mm -hmm. that part from an IT perspective. And then from there, started getting into IT disaster recovery on um, data. So, right. hey, how to protect your data in the event of uh, cyber attack? How yeah. can we recover it? Okay, we gotta put these things in place. So my IT journey began in that functionality based upon just seeing the systems in IT. Because IT is really easy. If you really kinda, I'm not saying all of it, Look, but there's some stuff that... I, I try to tell people all the time, IT is something that I personally feel like anybody can learn, right? Anybody. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know how much you know about me, but basically I ended up getting into IT when I was 16. So in high school, we had a vocational school that people could go to. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't really paying attention in class or anything like that. So I'm like, anything I can do to get out of class, because I played ball. So I'm like, outside of that, I don't yeah. really care, right? So they told me, like, hey, we have this vocational school. They were teaching um, IT. They had two different IT classes. One taught you the CompTIA A+. The other one taught you CCNA for Cisco mm -hmm. Networking. And then they also had, like, HVAC welding, um, all different kinds of like trades, mm -hmm. right? So it was a trade school. If IT wasn't something that anybody could learn, why do they teach it at trade schools, right? Especially, so, especially CompTIA, because yes, that's just, you know, hardware, software. It's hardware, software. Mm -hmm. So I try to tell people, like, at the lowest level, which still pays well, right, you can learn IT. You can learn IT. You can learn hardware, software, networking, mm -hmm. get your foot in the door, and then from there you can get into more advanced things, but even at what you see, even at like a system administrator level, I, I believe anybody can do that kind of work. Listen, I got five of them. Exactly. And it is, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's systems administration. Yes. You know, it's just like right now, before I, before we came on, I was talking, we we're, we're onboarding two help desk technicians, yeah. paying them very well. But you're right, it's that hardware, software, mm -hmm. which is at the lowest level right. that you could make 50K a year, 70K yeah. a year to get started. Yeah. You know? and, and then the nice thing about it, too, is that, there's companies out there that are sponsoring clearances for these entry level roles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to start in help desk. I'm like, well, I mean, why wouldn't you want to start in a yeah, role where not? you're going to learn the foundations, learn how to troubleshoot, and you'll get a clearance. And then after you get your clearance, it's up to you. You can move from there. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, if you're, and if you're highly intelligent, if you're watching this, I want you to take this note. It's all about end user. Mm hmm you know, if you understand the end user, who who is the per, you know, because everybody's different. You got people who, <laughs> we deal with this all the time, to where we'd be like, why can't people follow instructions? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because of their personality. They right. look at it and they're just like, this is Chinese to me. Right. But if you're help desk, help desk, then learn the user, and now you can kind of formulate. Okay, cool. This group of this demographic of people behave like this more of your older you know gen whatever you want to call them uh baby boomer era they see it like this mm -hmm. okay gen x they kind of see it this way and i said you can literally create an entity a company to where you foster to those end users right right so so you end up getting your first IT contract and how did that go? Yeah. Like how, how what was the process? How did you, you know, you had to do the proposal, put the bid in, how'd you get right. that? So at that moment, um, because when I resigned from my job, I didn't have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> you were just like, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, like I don't you. care what it is. Cause, Cause at that moment I was married uh -huh. and I had six kids in the house. Oh wow. I had my five mm -hmm. and I had my uh, uh, ex-wife's son, right? my son because yeah. I, I don't use the word step right and so i'm 
you know, got this big old house, you know, and everything. And, you know, we're surviving off of um, the um, military benefits. Right. But, I mean, we live in Columbia, Maryland at the time. Yeah, yeah. And Legit that's expensive. one of the, you know, yeah. one of the most expensive, you know, places in, in, in the United States. And so, like, I just remember I had, like, $36. And I told this story on my IG. You know, it's factual. I just remember looking at my account, I had $36. So I ended up meeting somebody who was the president of the Black Emergency Management Association. Yeah. And great guy. Yeah. Called him up. He picked the phone. Like, hey, man, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because at that moment, you're not desperate, but you just need that. Yeah. You know, you just need a little bit of inspiration. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, we're going down to Ben Chili Bowl. Me and mm -hmm. a couple more people, you should come meet us. Yeah. And in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, you know, because it's an opportunity. And I'm like... But then I was like, you can like, swing Ben Chili Bowl with thirty six dollars. But hold on, but I'm <laughs> but I'm in Colombia and yeah. I gotta get down there, right? Right, right. So now, you know, this is where there's two types of people in the world. Mm -hmm. There's people who go, ah, I'm not gonna be able to do it, and there's people that go, okay, all right, how can I figure this out? Right. So I'm scrambling in my brain. I'm like, oh, I have my um, Metro card. Yeah. FEMA used to load money to it, mm -hmm. and I wasn't too far from the train station from right. Greenbelt. So I was like, oh, you know what? I can drive down to Greenbelt, jump on the, um, the train because my right, they were right still down. loading money to yeah, my yeah. car. You know, they're not too good without right, processing. Right. Yep. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So now I ain't got to drive all the way into the city. Mm -hmm. I got to pay for parking. Oh, There's yeah. gas. You, you see my uh -huh. brain? Yep. I get on the train, go down there, walk a couple blocks, get there. We're talking. Two other guys there, whatever. We're all talking. And I'm like, yeah, you know, military. And they were ex-military too. Mm -hmm. And so one of them was like, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm in business continuity, blah, 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 blah. And the guy was like, really? I said, yeah, you know, you know, I'm, I'm certified. You know, those are the type of things that I'm trying. Because I talk about when you start in a company, lead with your strengths. That's right. what I'm strong at. Okay. I can't, I can't win no other contracts because yeah. I'll fumble them because I don't know that work. But right. I know this. He was, like, he was like, I literally last week just got a contract for business continuity for Department of Health and Human Services, CMS. Wow. Centers for Medicaid. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I'm looking for a subcontractor that can do it. I was like, well, you ain't got to look no further right here. Right. He was like, okay, cool. He was like, um, well, it's only for um, two months, and, you know, it's about $30,000. I'm like, I got $36 in my account. $30,000. Right. <laughs> uh, what do we sign, sir? Right, right. Right. And he was like, cool. He was like, just give me a call tomorrow, whatever, and then, uh, we, you know, we'll do everything virtually, sign a contract, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. So did that, start it, and... I was supposed to be virtual, work it virtual, but I was like, nah, I'm going to go to the client. Yeah. Okay. Went online, got me a credit card real quick, got approved for like $2,000 on the credit card. And I was like, all right, cool. We're going to work this credit card. Right. And so I had to drive down to D.C. or take the train to D.C. to the Department of Health and Human Services. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to go to Baltimore to uh, Woodlawn because that's where CMS, uh, um, what they call it, not the regional office, but like their main office for yeah. CMS. And so I would drive up there, whatever, and I would be on site, like okay. be on site. And I'm talking to people, you know, with the customer. And the customer was like, you know, you ain't got to come here. And I said, no, I want to be here. Right, right. But I'm dressed, you know, everything. And I did a good job on the contract for one month. Yeah. And then, you know, by doing a good job on that contract and actually giving them innovative solutions. And mm -hmm. I was just pulling it from DR, DRI. I, didn't, I was still fresh. In, right, right. But I was like, I'm just going to use their resources to mm -hmm. kind of present. And then, and then office next door was like, hey, come here. And I was like, hey, what's up? He was like, uh, what's the name say? You're doing a great job over there. He was like, I got the same issue. Can you do my business continuity plan too? Because, you know, by every year they got to go through an audit process to yep. make sure it's up to date. Right. And I was like, yeah, you know, I can do it, whatever. Um, he was like, cool. He was like, uh, my budget is only 60 k <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I do it. Yeah. Boom. Contract. Ninety thousand yeah. dollars, you know, like I ain't so never, like in a you month, know. you pretty much surpass your salary that you were making exactly. already. Exactly. Yeah. So then I, once again, I'm working both contracts. I'm talking to them now. I'm, they're pulling me in meetings, and I'm briefing. I'm set up. I'm briefing everything. Yeah. And then the back end, when I would get home, I got my MBE, my Minority Business Enterprise Certification. Yeah. And then I don't know how I came up with this. But I end up getting the list of all these major prime contractors. Mm -hmm. It's like 1,200 of them. Right. And I just sent them an email each. 
Okay. Twelve hundred separate emails, but it was copied and pasted because yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know automation back then. Yeah. And so I just did like you know two hundred a day, right? Same thing. I'll copy their what's the name? Hey, my name is blah 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 blah. I'm uh, the founder of Black Fox. We specialize in da 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 da. Like I did that, and I would say I'm an MBE. Mm -hmm. You know, I would do all that. It right. was a, it was a template that I created. I had about out of the twelve hundred, four hundred respond. Um, 200 wanted to talk mm -hmm. and I had about 100 wanted to meet face to face mm -hmm. and out of that I had one company say hey we just won this contract I love your story I think you'll be a good fit for us we got to give 20% of the contract to an MBE you know would yep. you be be what I'm like cool yeah we can you know do that the contract was 20 million oh wow so and I ain't write no proposals I ain't write no proposals or nothing like that. I got twenty percent, right? Know? And it was bringing on some resources, systems, at, system. I'm still on the contract. Yeah, yeah. Some system, system admin people to work at the Motor Maryland Motor Vehicle Administration. Okay. To do their, um, at that point, they were trying, they were working on transitioning, and this is where I knew tech was easy because I just picked up on this stuff real quick. They were transitioning from people having to come into the MVA mm -hmm. to do their renewals online. to now to do it online. So yep. if you go to Maryland Motor Vehicle Administration mm -hmm. and now you can do everything online, yep. I'm on that contract. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I was like. But for people who don't know, 20% of $20 million is $4 million. So he, he just. To not have to write a, a proposal. Yeah. You said that? Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. the thing that, that I know about this business as well is it's, it's more relationships than anything. But I had no relationship with them. But you, but you, you ended up reaching out, right? But yeah. all of this started because of an initial relationship, right? That's correct. You yeah. created a relationship with with somebody. He invited you to dinner. You got your first one, mm -hmm. right? Then from there, you went in there and you you did a good job, right? Which is what everybody should do, whether you're an employee or whether you're trying to start your own company. Go in there, do a good job, and build relationships, right? Your work ethic spread around the office mm -hmm. which then you're like you know what let me start reaching out to other agencies and other primes mm -hmm. so that's how you got to where you were right so you know but without you you not even having to put in a a bid or proposal just based off of your work ethic who you are your story and just put in that working up front you know it just says a lot right it says a lot and to me it shows that one i feel like i'm, I'm overthinking the process oh yeah but you've been telling me that for a oh, while. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you because... You've been telling me for a while. So the, the thing about, especially our community, right? Mm -hmm. We start looking at the money first. Right. And you can't, mm. okay? It's like, it's, like, it's like when you meet somebody that you're interested in and you want to have a relationship with them, right? Mm -hmm. If you're looking at what I can get out of it first, it's going to fail. Right. Versus how can I be of great value to this person? How can I be of great quality right mm -hmm. when I get in I'm going to just be the best version of me and I'm going to hey we got these issues got this. I'm going to give you the quality mm -hmm. because once you do that now you lock in they're like hey we got this issue oh we can do that oh can you do this they'll keep feeding you because they trust you right and I think most people they get into stuff they get the money and then they just lose their mind versus okay how can we do this and what I would do is that you know because I had went, I had filed for bankruptcy in 2016, so I kind of know like I wasn't good at money back in 2016. Right. I just wasn't. There was nobody around me that knew about financial literacy, literacy or right. planning or anything like that. So that was a that was the greatest lesson in my whole entire life. Mm. Now, you can't like I'm when it comes to money now. Yeah. Shoot, you can't tell me nothing. But what I would do is that when I started invoicing and making money, I was like, cool. I'm going to only live off of this, mm -hmm. but I would ask questions and say, hey, what can I do to make my business more valuable? Okay. Oh, go get your ISO certification. How much did that cost? Oh, that's $5,000. Okay. Well, I got that because I'm stacking the business right, account, right. you know. Yeah, yeah, um, Okay, you need to go get this. You need to go get that for your company. Set up payroll systems, you know, bring in this consultant to help you out your HR. Right. Build that foundation so now... Yeah. It is doing this. So when you bring you onboard people, the onboarding is it transition smooth. is smooth, but people know what their roles are. Right. Right. Because I, I I do not like when somebody call me and say, hey, I need a password for this. Uh, it's in a, it's in the back office. Like right. all that stuff is back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you know you've already been instructed on how to get it. Right. And I think most people, if you do that, like make money, 
stack it, reinvest it back into the company, bring on good resources, keep your uh, standard of living low. Next thing you know, once you get into a good smooth transition, now you can start to splurge. Right, right. Okay. So for people who want to start like bidding on their own contracts, right? So we have a lot of people who watch this who either they already work for government contractors mm -hmm. or maybe they work for the federal government. Like what should they do to try to land their first contract? Um, the first thing you must do is that you got to know who you are okay. and what you can provide. Um, one of the biggest things that I push is doing a SWOT analysis. Okay. Right? Write down your strengths, write down your weaknesses, and then write down the opportunities and threats, right? Because there are a lot of threats that are out there. So with those strengths, you want to lead with that because I always tell people, lead with something that you can talk. You can talk to somebody for 10 minutes without even breathing right? because you just know it. Mm -hmm. Um, most people try to come in a space and they're like, oh, I'm going to get into HVAC. Okay, what do you know about HVAC? I don't know anything. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to find it and then I'm going to reach out to a person that can do it and I'm going to add on 10% to that contract. Mm. Okay, that makes no sense. Right. Because what if that company says, oh, we can do it for 50K, you add on 10%, you make five grand, but the true budget of that contract was 150K. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. If you knew what you were doing, mm -hmm. then you know how to price it adequately right. and know how to respond to that proposal. Um, so going back to it, most people, if, you, if you're looking at it, number one, there's abundance of resources out there from proposal writing um, to understanding the government um, to shoot, uh, finding the necessary talent and resources. There's a lot of resources out there. Right. Definitely, definitely. So... So when it comes to like writing proposals and stuff like that, do you recommend people learn how to write those things themselves or should they hire somebody? Like what, how, how should people go about that? Initially, you mm -hmm. should learn how to do it yourself. Okay. Right? Um, take, a, take a course, take a class. It's funny you say that because yeah. I'm about to do a workshop. Okay. Um, no, I've seen that. I want to yeah. sign up for it. Yeah, I'm doing a workshop. It's on what, um, February? 1st, February 1st. 1. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, do that because once you understand the psychology of proposal writing, mm -hmm. you can write and you can write to anything. Mm, like okay. literally, you can write to anything. Right. But there's two components to it, right? So most proposals, you're proposing mm -hmm. a solution. Okay. Right. Most people know it in their head; they just don't know how to put it, draft it on paper to mm. make it more um, uh, understandable. Right. For example, if an agency says we want to remove this wall. Okay, great. Get, propose to me how you're going to remove this wall. Okay, well, we're going to first start off with making sure that we're going to clear the area. We're going to put you all over here temporarily. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to make sure, you know, it's like you right. walking them through. You know it in your head because you right, can right. see it. Yeah. Now you got to put it on paper for them to be able to see it. Then it comes to, okay, once it's done, how we're going to inspect it, quality control. Is there a warranty associated with it? If mm -hmm. something happens, are you going to come back? You know, it's like, do we get a six-month warranty if you can come back and, re and replace things? And then uh, the piece is, the biggest piece right. is, how much it's going to cost me? Mm -hmm. You know, because and to them, they may have a budget for 15 k Because they actually bring in people that actually... Um, do the estimating. Mm -hmm. So like government agencies, they estimate how much it'd be. Right. And so most of the time people don't know how to estimate because they don't know the work or they didn't take the necessary time to make sure all the factoring pricing pieces in there. Right. Like, you know, I gotta travel to the site, I got labor, I got materials, mm -hmm. you know, all yeah. these different factors. I got overhead at my office I'm a factor in. And that's how cause the government uses the same tool. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a similar tool to right. be able to have that price. So how, how, do, how should people figure out the pricing? Since I taught them. You said what? I taught. You taught. My, oh, how, oh, how do people yeah, do Yeah, how, how can people figure out how to do pricing, right? Because I know mm -hmm. pricing is like some of the hardest parts of doing your proposal because it's like you come in way over budget or like you said, you might come in way under because you missed some things. Mm -hmm. And I, I know the government right now, you know, they like... They try to get the low bid, but if your bid doesn't make sense, you know. Well, it just depends yeah. on the agency because low bid ain't always it. Okay. Yeah, I've gotten beaten out by $2 million. Oh, wow. They paid $2 million because our technical yeah. score, because in the evaluation criteria, they evaluate all the proposals. Right. Because remember, this is the public's money. They want to make sure that they, they choose the best 
uh, vendor to be able to perform the work. Right. And I've come in and, you know, they paid another company $2 because they're like, yeah, you were good, but they were better. We're willing to make that, mm. you know, extra $2 million um, investment. So, um, price, I mean, you just got to... Like, what's your process to doing pricing? Oh, we factor everything. So mm -hmm. just to over, just overhead, I mean, not overhead, but just to give a good overview, um, labor rates. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to pay somebody, right, I'm paying them a salary, what is that broken down per hourly? Right. Okay, so now that's one factor. Then I have uh, benefits. Okay, we, you know, we got to pay $500 for this person, $600 for this person, for this mm -hmm. person for medical, dental, vision, all that stuff, right? right? So that's a cost associated with me. So labor categories are cost to me, benefits are cost. The company has overhead, you got phones, you got office space, you right. got this, right? We gotta break that down into hourly as well. So that's a piece, and then there's GNA, mm -hmm. general administration. You got salaries, you got you know, people who are not billable on a project that is a part of that overhead, but they're not overhead, right. they're general labor, or, yeah. or general, a general, administration, general, general administrative labor. And then, um, so that's the total cost, right, with those factors. Then you got travel, then you got, you know, you got some other things that you gotta factor in. Right. Then you gotta add on your profit, mm -hmm. which in the government contracting world is called a fee. Mm -hmm. So in all that, I'm gonna add on you know, a 10% profit, a 15% profit, a 20%. Right. But once you got your numbers, right, you know, hey, in order for me to help them mm -hmm. with their problem, to solve their problem, it's gonna cost me this, right? Right. Now for all my pain and suffering, I'm gonna be compensated for this. Gotcha. So this is like, you know, your pro it's like cost yeah. and profit. Now I can take it, and this is where people don't even, oh man, I'm about to, um, corporate America's about to hate me for this. <laughs> so now I know what my overall cost is, yeah. right? So now if I'm gonna bring on a, a person to do the work, right, I know that my hourly rate is $50 an hour, yeah. right? What I'm gonna do when I find that resource? Hey, I got this job, you know, we paying $38 an hour. Right, <laughs> yep. So now you come back like, ah, oh, well, I was thinking about, okay, fine, I'll give you 41. Yeah, yeah, right. right? So you, you make, and that's why I tell people, I'm like, you know, I explain to people that, you know, you basically can cut out the middleman, right? Mm -hmm. So if you work at a government contracting company like Northrop, Raytheon, Lockheed, whoever, right? Whatever they're paying you, my dad, he likes to double say, it. It. yeah, double it. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what the government is yeah. actually paying them. So if you get to the point where you cut them out completely, you could go 1099. You could potentially get that entire, you know, spread oh, yeah. if you if you're doing you know, fifty dollars an hour right. as a W two. Yep. Now you can make a hundred dollars an hour as a 1099, 1099 or yep. corp to corp, mm -hmm. right? And which and what you can do is that if you are 1099 slash corp to corp that's still considered subcontracting. Right. So now that's past performance mm -hmm. in your company. Gotcha. But instead of you making a fifty dollars and then, you know, fifty dollars an hour, now you can make a hundred dollars an hour and then you pay for your own benefits. Right. People don't even realize this, but it to to get the best benefits package, right? Mm -hmm. For the whole year. Right. If you pay out of pocket, like the best, and you marry with kids and all mm -hmm. that stuff, maybe six to seven thousand dollars. For the year? For the year. So if I'm bad. making, you know, 200K for the year, right. minus that eight, right. that is a come up versus making that $50 an hour, mm -hmm. I'm making 100K a year, Uncle Sam is going to take 30% of that. Right. It, it, yeah. It, yeah, and then you don't get the write-offs, you don't, you don't there's, get, a, there's exactly. a lot of different benefits for owning your own company and doing things like 1099 or yeah. like you said, corp to corp. There's a lot more benefits to it. So for now, you talk pricing. You talked about you know how people can get their first like uh, win their first contracts. What type of uh, like designations do you recommend people to get? Right. So like you said, you got the MBE, you got the ISO. Like what type of, what type of um, designation should people be going after now? Like if they want to get started. So there's two categories, right? Okay. And most people say certifications. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm a I'm a address that right and so you have industry certifications okay. like your ISO 9001 quality management ISO 22301 there's cybersecurity right these are mm -hmm. in these are certifications for your company right right now the other certifications that people like to highlight like the minority business enterprise 8a woman on small business 
they're not certifications. You are just you are cert you have been certified mm -hmm. to be verified that you are a woman right. and this is your company. Right. right. Those are called small business programs. Got you. They're small business programs to help you grow your company. Mm -hmm. So they look at it, they'll look at all these this the scope of work of all these contracts and they'll say, Okay, we can set aside this type of work to a small disadvantaged business mm -hmm. because the requirements are not crazy technical and all that. So they actually do an evaluation and say, okay, this can go into 8A program. This can go to veterans. This can go to people who live in a, who are hub zone certified. And so they set those contracts aside because they have a memorandum of agreement with the small, small business administration. Gotcha. So that's the partnership. Yep. Um, and so now what it is is that it gives you a higher chance to compete and win government contracts when you're part of those different small business programs. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, people like to talk about the 8A program and, you know, they'll, they'll first get started in government contracts. I'm going after 8A and I'm like, no, you want to like... Get, let's, let's, get, let's get into that. We are. Let's and, get and, into that. And this is going to sure. help. This is going to save a lot of people. Okay. Um, you. So the 8A program is a small disadvantaged business program, right? Mm -hmm. it's for and what about, aren't that, isn't the government trying to do away with it? Like, or they're no. trying to make it to where you can't just get it if you're a minority, right? Well, that was the thing that happened yeah. early this year, no, yeah, last, last year, year or whatever, because uh -huh. there was one firm that was like, I don't think it's fair and all right. that stuff. But just like anything, you know, it, it, it did this and yeah, then it came died down. down, right? It's, it's a disadvantaged business. I mean, there are people that are disadvantaged, right. you know, African-Americans, Hispanic-American, women, right. uh, people with disabilities. And so there are contracts out there to where, once again, they're not, they're not too technical, right? It's like right. they're administrative, they're, you know, program management. Mm -hmm. Why not? These right. are, we want everybody to have fair equity. So this scope of work is not too, you know, intrusive to where this uh, demographic of people can't do this work. Mm. And so the 8A program is designed for that because it's not designed for you. I, I call it the government contracting welfare program, right? <laughs> the government contracting welfare program? It is the program. government contracting welfare program because there's two things that can happen. Yeah. You, you get it, right? And you excel and grow your business. Yeah. And then you graduate out the program, uh -huh. you know, and next thing you know, you have a, a great business. Right. Or you stay in it. The government keeps feeding you, and mm -hmm. then when you when the, when it expires, you go, because you were waiting on the government to keep feeding you versus using it as a platform to help you get to the next level. Mm. So when do you think people should go after their 8A? At least when about four years in business. Four years of business, yeah. then they should go after it. Yeah, because I see a lot of people, they go after it immediately. And just like you said, it expires. Yeah. How many years is it? You get 10 years. 10 years. Or up to $100 million in revenue. So Got you. those two tracks. But let's say I'm just getting started, mm -hmm. right? I have no relationships. I have no business structure. It's just me. Why would I go into, like, the government? You got to remember, it's still the government has a yeah. mission. Yeah. So they're not going to look at you like, oh, yeah, we'll give you this contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're still going to look at you and say, okay, you have no past performance. You don't, you know, you don't. Well, so what's past performance for people who don't know? So past And how important is it as well? It varies. Okay. So past performance is I have written documentation to say that I've done this before, right? And AKA is nothing but a business reference. Right. That's it. You know, when you go out for a job, what did they ask for? Three references, right? Yeah. So they ask for three references, so that's all it is. Okay. Because you're saying you can do this work, we just want to verify that you can, that you say that you can. And so um, past performance is very important, but at the same time, learning is extremely important when you first get started. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that's going to kick your butt when you get started that you don't know. Right? right. And so having that, you know, annotated past performance or um, allowing them to see that, okay, you are a, a, a up and coming small business and you do have the right tools and infrastructure it eases them mm -hmm. because every contract has risk associated with it right you know like if i bring you it's like you know if you want floors done to your house right yeah you're like contractor you good you're gonna put okay i'm gonna go do something else right but then you come back and you're like you say you're gonna put the floors in it. ah no this is my first time doing it you're like 
what? What are you talking about? Right. Like, I hired you to do <laughs> yeah, a job. Yeah, to do the work. And so the government thinks that in that capacity to say, no, we still need to make sure that you are, that you can do the work. Right. Because it's not just your butt is on the line. Their butt is on the line, too. Right. Because you, they want to look good to their bosses. Yeah. So if I hire you to help me out with this thing I'm having, right, mm-hmm. and you get the work done, and now I get to go to my boss and say, look what I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So what what are the things that catch people off guard? Because you say, like, it, it gets people when they first get started. What, what are the things that people should be looking out for and um, pay attention to and try to avoid when they're first getting started with government contracting? Um, biggest thing is if you're going to partner with people, make sure you have contracts in place got you yep yeah yep team and agreement uh-huh. subcontract agreement and a subcontract agreement or you know whatever agreement you have needs to have clear and concise information right mm-hmm. how am i going to invoice you am i going to invoice you net 15 net 30 net 45 i never tell people don't go beyond net 30 because you need money yeah. <laughs> um true. You know, what is the the life of the contract? You know, you know, you, it needs to have clear and concise instructions. Yeah. Don't ever start doing work without having that contract in place. Yeah. Um, that's one of the biggest things. And then understanding your pricing, too. Gotcha. You know, one of my biggest things I, I talk about in my community is you don't ever want to charge the crackhead price. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I give you a cybersecurity contract and you got to bring on two people and you telling me you can do it for $35 an hour that's a crackhead price. Facts. Yeah. Because we all know the so government is paying 100 But do you think people do that because they're just so desperate to get a contract? Desperate and just don't know. Mm. Or they don't ask questions. Right. Just ask. Hey, right. So what questions should people be asking? Is my price right? I had one of my mentees one time going back and forth with this person. They were going after the contract and because I, I review some of them, not all, but I'll review some. And I'm like, your pricing is way off. We need to triple this pricing. Like, right. Well, I, I want to submit it because I just want to win. I was like, no. Yeah. That's not what it, no. Like, that's no, not what it's about. Yeah. Let's, here's, I was like, let's go through the pricing. This is the pricing that you need to, that you need to charge. Going back and forth, going back and forth. Finally submit. And I said, did you use the one that I tell you to use? Yeah. And, you know, yeah, okay, I used that. I said, okay, great. Two weeks later. Mm-hmm. I get email. She forwarded me. The contract has been awarded. Smiley nice. face. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. See. Right. But um, the contract was for a quarter of a million. She found somebody who can do the work for eighty thousand. Wow. So did she only have to hire one person? Like, how does that one work? Person. How does that work, right? How are these contracts, like you literally can win a contract and you only got to go hire one person. You don't have to do the work yourself at all. It's the requirements. Right. Okay, so if the requirements say we just need one person to do this work. Yeah. Then yeah, great. So you, the government, so the government understands the formula that cor- um, businesses, you got to make money. And so you got to pay a person, you got to, you know, p- you know, pay yourself and right. you got to support your business. And so that quarter of a million, the person agreed to say, yeah, I'll do it for 80K. Mm. When the true budget for that position was 120. Wow. But once again, if you, you know, yeah. you go into those negotiations. Right. And that's the importance of negotiations, right? I tell people all the time, like, you know, if you aren't making a certain amount of money, it's because you aren't negotiating for it. Yeah. Because a lot of the times the, the people, they they think that, Hey, you know, I, I'm only making 60k. There's no way I can ask for 120. Why not? Why not? If if that's the market rate, if you have those skill sets, you have the right qualifications, mm-hmm. certifications. Why not? Right. So you can't be afraid to ask for the right right amount of money, and you can't be afraid to negotiate. So many of us get an offer, and they're like, Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna take this offer. This is the most Des- money I've ever seen. Desperation, right? Yeah. And you said something that was very key: market rate. Mm-hmm. People don't research. No, they don't what research. What are people paying mm-hmm. in their position? You know, I was I was up until two o'clock in the morning last night, and you know, doing pricing on a contract that's due today. So I'm pretty sure they've been blowing my phone up. Yeah, um, you had to turn. He had to turn his phone off. They, they are blowing <laughs> him up right now. <laughs> but it's due. It's due at two o'clock. Yeah. And you know, I did the pricing. You know, just revised it last night, and it came up to 102 million dollars. Wow. So how does that work? Can you talk us through that? 
far as the it, like you coming up with the pricing for this contract for 102 million mm -hmm. type of profit you could potentially see if you get awarded oh, I, I, got, I got the whole all the numbers I yeah know, I, I know you, you gotta know, know you just the did it last night so yeah. if you could talk us through it and then like you know what type of people will you need to hire so this is a cybersecurity assessment okay contract um Estimated about 102 million. I'm pretty sure you know 100 mm -hmm. million. You know what the government is looking at. Right. So about 100 million for eight years. Okay. Uh, 47 positions, ranging from subject matter experts to network security engineers. You name it. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of quality control testing. A yep. lot of that. And so, it's in a particular state to where the cost of living is high. Yeah. So we had to look at all the, the market research to figure out each position. Okay, all right, so this particular state, they're paying for this position this much per hour. Right. Plug and, but where are you going to get that research? Where, where are you going specifically to do that research? I use salary.com. Salary.com, that's where you go? Yeah. Okay. I, I use salary.com, and there's another one I use, too. So I'm able to pull it up, and we have a, we have a subscription with them, too. Yep. It just helps out faster. Mm -hmm. Able to pull it up. Oh, Lockheed Martin is paying this person, mm -hmm. you know, or this position this much. Bet. I see the average. Now it's time to plug it in. And we have an in-house calculator to where we just plug in the labor, and then it goes through all the pricing, and mm -hmm. it spits out at the end yeah. what we should charge the, the government. The so you're, you're working smarter, not harder. Uh, you created yeah. your own in-house tool that calculates everything for everything. you. So you're not up like, okay, let me do the math on this. Let me plug it all in a spreadsheet. Uh -huh. It's just, hey, I got these numbers. This is what the labor rate is. This mm -hmm. is what I'm going to pay people. Okay, this is what I can charge. Yep. That's the pricing tool. So yeah. you plug it in, boom, and now we get to take that information. Um, and it, 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 it does it for um, the escalation of 3% each year. That makes mm. sense. So year yep, one is this, yep. you know, year yep. two. So now I got all the numbers to mm -hmm. say, okay, over the life of this contract, a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Now it tells me what my profit is going to be mm -hmm. based upon our fee structure and everything. Right. And so, you know, you can walk away with a good $15 million of profit. Nice, nice. So what what's the requirements? Let's just talk about one of the roles. We'll, we'll keep it at like cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. What's the requirements for the cybersecurity professionals that you're going to have to hire for this contract if you end up being awarded a contract? To provide assessments. Mm -hmm. So there's over 50 plus agencies within this state yeah. to where you have to do assessments. Yeah. Do they need uh, certain certifications for the, the cybersecurity Some of them are C CISSP. Yep. You know, I'm not a, I, I'm in cyber, but I'm yeah. not like Right, like right. Deep into cyber like that. Yeah. But I yeah. just wanted to know so, like, people will know what type of. Because I tell people all the time, I'm like, just to get into GovTech, you need your security plus. I was like, mm -hmm. DOD 8570, IAT level two. You start there. Get your foot in the door so you can get root access. So even if you do start in help desk, you'll be out of it pretty quickly. Exactly. Right. Because they look at that and they look at that as God. They're like, yeah. oh, you got this? Okay, great. The beautiful part about mm -hmm. the government is that they give you the job description. I know. So they you just got to just framework. copy and paste. Yeah. You know, literally, you can copy and paste it and put it on, you know, we put on our website and all mm -hmm. that, put on all these uh, recruiting tools. And now you have that, you know, stuff, literally copy and paste, boom, 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 put right. your logo on it, all that stuff. And they give you all the requirements. Because this, this, is, this is what we call the IDIQ, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. Okay. So it's kind of like a, we have a $100 million budget. Mm -hmm. And when we need these resources, we're going to reach out to your company. The rates are already locked in, so gotcha. we already know what we're going to pay you. We mm -hmm. already got the money in an account somewhere, mm -hmm. and you just need to get us some resources within a desirable time. Usually right. they'll give you like two weeks mm -hmm. to find a person. Um, the, one, the, one, the one thing I don't like is that the government interviews these mm -hmm. candidates. Yeah, yeah. The government customer yeah. interviewed the yeah, candidates. Yeah, you have to bring them in. So, like, yeah. for people who don't know how the process works, right? So, with, with a lot of these recruiting firms, what they'll do is, first, they'll find the talent for you. Mm -hmm. They they do their little interviews, right? You go through their interview, and then you got to go into the customer, and then you interview with the customer. <laughs> and if the customer's like, okay, we like them, then you bring them on. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, you bring them on, uh -huh. you go through the background checks, mm -hmm. the drug screening, fingerprinting, and all that stuff, which is, you know, another cost that yeah. people overlook, because that's 165 bucks per person, you know, depending on the agency, mm -hmm. you know. And so now, I, I don't want that to come out of my pocket. Right. That's going to come out of that rate, too. You know? right. So that's a factor in as well. And so now, you know, they, they may have to go through badging. You know, then they report to the customer. 
Now they belong to my company. They're working on customer site. Mm -hmm. I still got to make sure they got communication. So now I got I to gotta give them an email account. Mm -hmm. So that's another license with Microsoft. That's $4.95. So I know the numbers. Hey, like, I know all the numbers. I know all the I numbers. I know the cost. Now when I do my annual review of my insurance, because you got to have professional liability, general liability, mm -hmm. um, and cyber, mm -hmm. and uh, what is the other one, uh, workers comp, now, I'm talking to my insurance. They're like, oh, how many employees you got now? Oh, I got 30. Okay. It was great. Ping. Oh, damn, my insurance just went up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now my insurance premium goes up. That's another cost that people don't think about, you know. And now, every time you run payroll, you got to run payroll taxes. So mm -hmm. each every time, like, people don't understand this. Every time you run payroll, like, tw if it's twice a month or yep. whatever, that's a tax. You're right. So now I got to factor in that pricing because now mm -hmm. you got to look at all the associated costs associated with it. So, and then if employee have employee credit cards, you know, some of those credit cards may have annual fees on them. Like mm -hmm. I got all you like, the I know costs, all the numbers. <laughs> all the costs. Like, yeah. Like I'm telling you, I think there's, in Black Fox alone, there are 75 line items of cost. Mm, okay. Yeah, 75 line items from like marketing tools and it's all, you know. Um, so it's like, you, you know all that numbers. And then separate, we got the cost for GNA, which is salaries. Got you. So you got to, I'm telling you, people got to know your numbers, man, because you don't need payroll. Or if you don't know what your structure is on, what your monthly goals have to be in order to make payroll and pay for operational costs and everything else, then, you know, set a little side for yourself with yeah. it. You know, you don't, you're just kind of out here with a hobby versus being a business owner. Right. So um, can you explain how that works? Like, say you get awarded a contract, how much money do you get paid, like, up front from that contract? Ain't no up front. No up front. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some special cases to mm -hmm. where the government may, may do that. I've, right. ne I've never experienced that before. But that's why it's good to have lines of credit yeah. ready or cash reserve, whatever. Uh, because you, when you get paid once you invoice the government, correct, right? So right. The, you already have to have enough funds to bring people on. I tell people, yeah. I tell people, if the contract starts one February, mm -hmm. right? You don't look for no money into your account for sixty days because mm. you got to do the work for thirty days. Yep. Then you invoice them. Net thirty, they got thirty days to pay that invoice. Now, one thing I can say, which is great about. The government, oh my goodness, I love them so much, is that I've never had to go past 30 days mm -hmm. on federal. Right. State and local, there's only one time I had an issue with not getting paid after the 30 days is because the person, they, it was like a small agency and mm -hmm. they had one person and yeah, that yeah. person ended up getting out. COVID or oh, something okay. like that. Yeah. And they ended up getting sick. So that person was out like 20 days or something like that. So mm -hmm. they were like the one that go in the system and approve it. Right. And so they're like, oh, we're so sorry. I was like, oh, it's okay. This is good. You know? Yeah. But for the most part, when you do business on a federal level and some good states, whatever, they got system so mm -hmm. you invoice you know they'll get a ping they'll review your invoice review the monthly report and then they just hit approve and automatically within 48 to 72 hours the money hits your account mm, got you okay so like what what's something that somebody could do if they're working as a government contractor right now and they want to start doing corp to corp um there's a thing i call the resume strategy mm, okay Okay, the, res that? the resume strategy is taking your resume, right, beefing it up, and putting it in on all the platforms. Mm. If there's a, just Google all the recruiting, put your copy and paste it, put it on all the platforms, but it says the job type, put contractor. Right. Okay. People are still going to reach out and call you. And try even, to hire you as a W-2 cause, employee. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you a hack that I do on, on the corporate side. And so now when they, when they reach out to you, you say, and they'll say, hey, we got this job opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And you say, thank you so much. My rate, C2C mm -hmm. slash 1099 is this. Right. So now they're like, oh, okay, all right. Well, can you do this? Um, maybe. If, right. if it's remote, okay, great. I can do $85 an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, right. because now you can kind of probably balance two at the same time. Or if it's, in, if it's on site, I'm like, Mm, 115 right right depending on the type of work you do the math 1920 times a hundred dollars an hour 
that's some good money right there. That's a you know hundred and ninety some thousand dollars for the year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's that's simple. That's simple. That's straightforward. Yeah. And I mean, the resume strategy. I got one guy mm -hmm. um, in my community. He did it. I think in his job, he was making about one hundred five. He's in cyber. Mm -hmm. He did the resume strategy. Went over, switched over from W two to corp to corp. He makes three hundred seventy five k mm. corp to corp. Yep. And then the customer is like, "Well, can you bring on more people?" Because we got more requirements. Yeah. He did it, and now he's making eight hundred k. Whew. So did he, he? Did he staff for them? He's staffing, but they yeah. underneath his company. He's wow. already on the contract. Yeah. But the customer like him so much, they're like, "Hey, can you get us two more people?" Yeah. yeah. And I, he said, hey, he called me. He said, oh, "They asked me. I said, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna because I do like a workforce strategy to how to find talent for free. Mm. And so um, we did that. Found two people. They liked them. Now. He's like, man, I'm paying him this, but I'm billing this. I said, yeah, that's called capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> said, that's called capitalism. You're yeah. capitalizing. I said, but he was like, man, but I feel bad. I said, you can't feel bad because right. you, you just created two jobs. Mm. They're happy. Right. They got jobs. They're getting paid every two weeks. They're taking care of their families. They have no, you know, I said, right. and I said, what you do is that with that little extra profit that you're getting set something to the side and be like give me some bonuses give me some bonuses there. right yeah yeah okay so that look that's a simple straightforward strategy right so um can you talk about like your community and the mentorship that you do have because that's why i have reached out to you right so like i said earlier at the beginning of this episode i do not believe in doing anything without hiring the best of the best hiring a consultant a mentor somebody because I've learned my lesson. I'm not starting anything from scratch anymore. Um, so I do have a, a community. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you the history about the community. So um, I have this thing called GovCon Blueprint. Mm -hmm. um, there were some mishaps in my government contracting journey that I learned, mm. and I was dealing with some prime contractors. They would you know, bring you on and be like, oh yeah, you know, we'll give you, and then they'll go ghost. I'm actually dealing with a situation right now to where I'm about to sue them. Yeah, I remember. I think I saw you post yeah, about I'm that. Yeah, I'm not joking. Yeah, I'm, right. I told him, do not play with me. I'm right. not that one. And so um, I wanted to create a safe space for people to learn how to win government contracts, right? Mm -hmm. Social media is a gift and a curse, mm -hmm. but I want it true. Right. I, I'm 1 million percent have no idea what other government contracting people are doing on social yeah. media. I have no idea. Right. You, you focus on you and what you I do. am like, right. uh, I am like, this is my lane. Uh -huh. Like, I'm look. you know, some people be way over here and doing uh -huh. this. I'm like, because people be like, what you, like your content. I'm like, it all comes, I have no, I have no idea what they're doing and I right. don't care. Yeah. Not in a bad way, it's just mm -hmm. that it I can only give you, you, I can only give you what I know. And mm -hmm. I tell that in my community. So I wanted to create a safe space, and it was my wife's idea to do it. Like, you know, maybe you create a community because people keep asking you questions, and you could do a brain dump there yeah. and help people win. And so I wanted to create a community to where people could come in, um, but I also want to create jobs too. Right. Right. And so come in, pay a subscription, but you get you know tons of resources from templates to pricing tools to a whole thing yeah. that you know it's kind of like wow, I got this and I can do it. And then weekly. Every Tuesday at 7.30 for an hour, I do like, a, I call it a mentorship call, mm -hmm. but it's a training session. Yeah. Right? How to do this, how to do that, you know, how to do this. And then um, got into that, then started creating courses. I'm not really, I struggle with that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I struggle so bad because I'm a business owner. Right, yeah. And I don't want people to look at me as an educator because I'm right. not. I tell people all the time, I'm not a teacher, I'm yeah. not a coach, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a counselor. Like, I'm just literally just sharing my, my experiences with yeah. you. Yeah. And so, um, you know, did that. I didn't think it was going to blow up how it was, but, you know, it's b blown up. Yeah. Kicked off a mentorship program because people wanted to sub with me or partner with me. And I'm like, yeah. you're going to pay to play. Right, right. right? Nothing to do with me per, per se, but I can create more jobs yeah. in this company. And so started doing that, uh, mentoring people one on one, and next thing you know, people start winning government contracts. Right. And plus, from an egotistic side, I wanted to break a couple myths. What so were a couple the myths? myths were, yeah. 
oh, it's going to take more than two years to win a government contract. No, yeah, I used to see that all the time. I never believed in it. But people be like, yeah, you're not going to win a contract for at least two years. Yeah. You know, there's no way you can do it any faster. You got to come in. You got to do this. You got to go through all these steps. And I never believed that because, like I said before, like I already knew a lot of it was like relationships. Like if you're doing a good job at an agency, you now, can come in. But that was another myth I wanted to break, right. too. Another myth was, oh, you got to have a relationship mm. with this. If it's on Sam.gov, mm -hmm. it's probably too late to respond to it because mm. they already know who they want to pick. It was just a lot of stuff that I would just yeah. hear people say. Right. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to prove that. We're going to break that. Right. So now I've broken all the myths. Yeah. I had people come into the program 30 days when the prime contract. I know. I've seen that. No relationship. Right. Zero. Yeah. There was no relationship with the customer. Won a government contract. Pocketed seventy plus thousand dollars, you know, it's mm -hmm. like boom, one government contract, one person, you know, I mean, a lot of people want subcontracts, uh, one person, no website. I was like, hey, we're gonna break that myth too. No <laughs> website, no website, no, she, no, she has no website, nothing like that. Submitted. That's her. that's a big thing too. People are like you gotta have a website, yep. gotta have all everything on there, all yep. your services, past mm -hmm. performance, all that. No website, yep. but I told her you gotta have a professional domain. We're right. Not, we, we're gonna, we're not yeah, gonna you do gotta no have that. Accounts. Right. Right. And so professional domain, she submitted, two weeks later, prime contract. Wow. Federal prime contract. You know, six figures. Wow. One and only one that she's ever submitted. Yeah. And he submitted one since. It's like, okay, what are we doing now? Yeah. Another person, because um, we don't just focus on federal. It's like, I'm like, I tell people all levels of government, quasi-government. Yeah. Like, we are everywhere. One person, she is on contract number five in a year. And wow. she's been with this same two customers and that's a school it's a school it's a, it's a um, um, board of education is who, who the buyer mm -hmm. is yeah and it's the same two board of educations and now she's coming to be like their go-to yeah you know because they're like well we got this can you do it yeah. yeah sure i can do that you know and that's the thing that i'm trying to get people to see is that the government is all around you yeah right it's everywhere you just gotta get in mm -hmm. i'm in henry county and i go to this place called two eggs for breakfast after mm -hmm. i leave the gym and I walk in there one time, and the Henry County Water Authority, mm -hmm. like, they're sitting in there all having breakfast. And I was like, oh, what's up, Henry County Water Authority? How y'all doing? Blah, blah, blah. And they talk, they're looking like, who the hell is this guy? Whatever, right. talk to him. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm black, you know, come, so, CEO of Black Fox. And I was like, yeah, I've been trying to do business with y'all, da, da, da. The director of purchasing mm -hmm. was there. He was like, you know, cool guy, whatever. He was like, what's up? Oh, he said, like, I follow you on social media, man. You, yeah. You're a cool guy, man. He's like, yeah. you're taller than what you than, than, <laughs> than what you see, what you what you look like. Yeah. And he was like, How about this? Give me your number, whatever. He was like, I want to invite you to come into the facility and do a capabilities briefing. Mm, okay. Right? Because they yeah. got contract opportunities. Right. And so um, there's just a lot of things, a lot of myths that I've just want to break, you know, because anybody can do it. And that's mm -hmm. why I try to like not I don't motivate anybody. I try to inspire people to say, listen, I, I'm not that smart. Right. You know, like I ain't that intelligent to where y'all are super smarter than I am. Mm. But if I can do this, you can probably take it to 10x than what I'm doing. Right. Mm, okay. I wanted to talk about one last thing before we wrap up. So you were talking about the overseas contracts mm. that you're getting. You don't want to talk about that on camera? No, no, I'm cool. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Cool yeah, yeah I, I want to talk about, like, the overseas. How is that process going? Because you were telling me you told somebody about how to do it, and then now they're in Morocco. Yep. Um, so um, I do have a business plan. Yeah. And this is where a lot of companies fail, a lot mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs and business owners. You don't – if you do not do a business plan, your company is just going to be – you, you, you're going to have moments to where you do this, and then you're going to always, it's like a rocket, right? Rocket takes off, the fuel goes away, and that thing has to come back, to gravity mm -hmm. pull it down. You get more fuel. And I'm like, that's just too emotional. Right. How about we have a plan? Mm -hmm. We're going to take some time and we're going to write a plan. What is the plan? What do we want to see in 10 years mm -hmm. so you can do this? And so one of my plans was to have Black Fox International mm -hmm. portfolio. So it was like, you know, this is the portfolio. And I was like, I don't know how to do this. You know, but I'm going to ask questions. I asked one guy a question. He was like, oh, I know so-and-so and so-and-so, da-da-da-da. I'm going to put you in contact with them. Talk to that person. Talk, you know, they gave me some great information. And then they said, I'm going to introduce you to the trade office. So mm -hmm. each state has a trade rep. 
that you got to get personal with, right? So I uh, reached out to my trade rep. Man, great guy. Like, I, I got him on my favorites. Like, yeah. Great guy. Told him what the plan was. Told him what the vision. And he said, hey, we got, you know, some funds, mm -hmm. some grants that you can use. Just let me know if you want to go to trade shows, da, da, da. And so I went to Africa to a trade show, fully funded, uh, Flight was paid for a hotel and taxis. You just got to pay for your, your meals. Mm. Did that, right, with intentions, with goals. Boom, boom, boom. Met some people. Uh, got invited to the U.S. Embassy and, you know, shared, you know, hey, this is what I'm trying to do for you all. I right. didn't make it about me. I made it about them. Right. I saw that you are trying to do this. We can help with that. Right. And they were like, okay, great. Next thing you know, hey, we got an opportunity for you. But the key thing about it is that, I went to them. Right. Okay. Right. Most people are trying to do it virtually, but that's not how the international space works. Right. right? Yeah. You got to go to them. Mm -hmm. But no money came out of my pocket, so I did that. Um, every time there's a trade show, every time there's something going on, the trade office calls me and say, "Hey, you want to go?" Mm -hmm. Like, sure. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah. All right. Cool. Submit this. Submit this. Um, some states are different. This is on a state level. Right. Some states are different to where they'll give you the money up front to pay for your stuff. Mm. Some states will say, we'll reimburse you. Right. Don't matter. Yeah. I like to be reimbursed because I put it on my Amex, get yep. the points, mm -hmm. and then get they the reimburse points. it. But yeah, so it's like that's been a blessing to be able to have that because everything's a partnership. To yeah. have that partnership with them to be able to say, hey, we got this going on in Saudi Arabia. We got this going on in South Africa. We got this going on in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, we want you a part of it to be able to showcase your services because that's how it keeps their program alive, right? right? And then, but at the same time, you, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't like to share this on social media mm -hmm. because I don't want people to abuse it. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. like, but if you use it right, because yeah, if you're gonna go overseas, ha have some leisure, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah but still make it about business. And so we've been able to penetrate Germany, Africa, Indonesia, and um, the next place I'm working on now is the Philippines. Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's using that partnership yeah. mm -hmm. with, oh, and Algeria too. Okay. Yeah, um, that's another one too. I gotta uh, submit her like a big report. But you get in contact with the trade office and then there's another office too. It's a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. And then, shoot, you let them know, you know, the vision, everything, and how you can support them. Mm -hmm. Man, they, they the bank is open all day long. I have I've not paid for any international travel. Wow. Okay, so that's dope. All right. So please I, don't abuse it. Yeah. Please, please don't abuse <laughs> that. Please. Yeah. No, that's that's some real game right there for sure. Yeah. So do you? Does your company have an FCL? Facilities clean. We will. We will. Okay. Yeah, I got a. I got a uh, meeting next Wednesday about it. We're going to do a JV with a company yeah. who has one. Okay. Yeah, and that's going to help us get it because we're still a young company. Right. We've only been in business five years, mm -hmm. and so um, we're still young. Uh, have penetrated the eight-figure market. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one of my biggest goals was to hit that. Yeah. Because nobody in the history of my bloodline. Yeah. Has ever gotten this far. Right. It's a scary space. Yeah. But I was like, we're going to make it happen. Um, so meeting with them to do a joint venture to be able to penetrate those different markets. Because there's a lot of contracts with DOD, USAID, Department of State to where they require facilities clearance. But yeah. I've agreed such a rapport with them mm -hmm. that they're looking at me going like, yeah. So when you going to. Yeah. What's the typical it? process of getting an FCL? Um, if you didn't JV. The requirement, there mm -hmm. has to be a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, there has to be a contract that requires it because it is still government funded. Yeah. The government has to pay for that. Oh, okay. Clearance. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, you got to have a facility mm -hmm. um, or a secure facility. It yep. can be a shared space with yeah. someone else. But you, but you need a, a skiff. Yep, you got to have a secure facility. Um, what else? Um, Do you need a home skiff too? I know, I know I some cyber people... Um, I think for some of their contracts, they need a home skiff as well. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I've never. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've never experienced that before. Yeah. Uh, but I do have a top secret SCI mm -hmm. with Poly Clearance. You still which, have one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. How, how are you keeping that active now? So I'm underneath another company, mm -hmm. right? And that's how you keep it. Yeah. Keep it going, whatever. I'm just underneath another company. So like 1099 or yeah, that's right. As, still. as a contractor with them. Okay. Yeah. Not doing any active work yeah. right now with them, but they. They hold. hold my Yeah, clearance. see, that's what I'm working on doing too, right? See, yeah. I messed up because I don't know why Raytheon did this. They let my TS expire. 
Like, well, it's not up to them. Yeah, it's up to you. Uh, yeah. You see, keep, I should yeah. I should have kept it active, but yeah. I kept reaching out to them like, hey, y'all don't have any programs. You can just put me on and keep it active. It don't and work that they're way. They're like, no. But I mean, for my dad, he's at Jacobs, and it, it works like that. Like they'll put. Oh, you, he's at Jacobs yeah, Engineer. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah he's yeah. at Jacobs, and they'll they'll put you on other programs to keep it active. Yeah, they don't yeah. want you losing it, right? Yeah. So, some of the you know between Raytheon, mm-hmm. Lockheed Martin. I yeah, mean, I just think fault. because they're so big. Yeah, they're like I don't. They, care. It's so many yeah. people. You know, Jacobs is big too, but mm-hmm. I know like mine. I mean, I was just like, listen, we good. They're like, yeah, we, we'll keep it. Right. You know, hold yeah, it. Yeah. So I, I, that's what I need to do. I need. But to it get helps me out. Active. It helps me out because now when we start the process of getting our FCL, mm-hmm. because of the highest person in your company has the test, a top yeah. secret SCI with Poly. Right. It helps us get a top secret clearance. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then on top of that too, it's easier for you to go on site. To talk to those customers, right? Most Cause you, definitely, right? Because yeah. you already you're already cleared, so you don't have that issue. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, you know some, you know, but it's but it's also, you know, I have my clearance is with DOD. Yeah, you see. So it's a, yeah, there's clearance. So with now. Every, yeah. I can't access NSA sites mm-hmm. or CIA, right? Because they're like, well, you have a. DOD yeah. top secret SCI probably good. Yeah, know. yeah, you got to get the other ones too. That's you can right. have multiple. Yeah, so I I used to have um, a DOD secret and I had a secret with um, like on the NSA side. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I had you know you can have multiple. So because you know NSA they're mm-hmm. just, they're a weird yeah. weird group of people. Boy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay, that's interesting. So last question to wrap this up. What's one piece of advice? That you could give somebody to be in your to get to your position today. Um, sit down with yourself and really scope out what are your strengths. Um, join a community; is is going to help accelerate it. Don't try to do it by yourself. Make the investments. Uh, join a join a community. Um, have a business plan, and then in your planning. Just say for 24 months, I'm not going to change my lifestyle. I'm not going to go buy a Lamborghini when you start making money. For 24 months, stack that money and then reinvest it back into your company. And then when you get processes and things going flowing, then you can, you know, start to do that then. But some some people, man, I'm telling you, they just, that they first check it. hit and they're like, we're going to make it rain. No, you make it rain on your company, not, not here over here. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, sit down with yourself, but in your business plan, if it already says, you know, this year I'm going to get an ISO certification, I'm going to focus on this customer, like, you just focus on the plan. Yeah. You know, and don't get, because I get it, right? It's easy to get distracted. Yeah. There's so many different things. I see people, they have shiny object syndrome. Like, immediately. It's crazy. Like, they'll be doing one thing and then they they all over the place. Versus just having discipline. Just, just, Mm -hmm. even if it's hard, just be like, oh, okay, 24 months, okay. Foxy, just keep, you know. So now when you start stacking and then you're like, man, I need extra help. Mm. Okay, cool. I'm going to hire this person. Right. You know, you start doing that. And then, because the ultimate goal is for you to not have to show up to meetings, for you to not have to be a part of the, the daily, mm-hmm. but you to be out and go out and do BD stuff, mm-hmm. do futuristic stuff to be like, okay, cool. I'm going to go to this golf event. And talk. Okay, cool. And, you know, it's like right. you want to, because you got to feed the machine. Mm-hmm. Okay. How can, it's like, how can you feed it? When you still trying to manage it, you still try. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. You can only do. It's so hard. Much. You can yeah. only do but so much. I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. No, that's that's great advice. So you know, thank you for coming out today, Fox. I thank definitely you appreciate invite. you. Yeah, where can people find you at? Where can they learn more about your company? I know you need to hire, um, and then also about your community as well and your mentorship. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at Fox underscore Wade. I'm on LinkedIn at Marcellus Fox Wade. Um, all social media platforms, for the most part, Fox underscore Wade. Um, if you go to win.govconblueprint.com, not www, but win, win.govconblueprint.com, go to our website. You can uh, find out more about our workshops. We do a workshop monthly. Uh, the community is forever growing. We got 200 plus members in there right now. And it's a young community, so we, we still got a lot of uh, uh, room to grow. Um, 
Uh, you can go to our, our company, www.blackfoxgroup.com, to see where we're hiring as far as careers go. Um, I know this year alone, I'm probably going to be hiring about 50 people, maybe even more. And also, even though I may look like I'm just calm and collective right now, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm going to get all these people from. But it's a great problem to have. So um, that's where you can kind of find some of the information about, you know, what we're doing in the government contracting space. Um, once again, young company, up and coming, fastest. Last year, we won the uh, Small Business Administration Veteran on Small Business of the Year Award. This year, we got the State of Maryland Governor Citation Award for creating 30 plus jobs in the state of Maryland. So it's like, we got a lot of stuff going on, but you know, the community is where you can kind of have a little bit of access to me and all the tools and the resources to be able to do it. Starting one February, I'm gonna start doing this thing in the morning time called Money Moves. So we're just gonna have some people come on, talk about some things we could do, you know, to make more money, right? Whether it's investing, whether it's you know, doing business stuff. Like we want people to get some of the greatest information from some of the greatest minds out there on how you can make money moves moving forward. So we got a lot of things going on. Busy, busy, busy year. Um, I probably got to get out of here to get yeah, into this. Yeah, I know. Contract, I know you got so. two two o'clock. You got to make it over there. Oh, man. Make sure your bid is in and everything's sure good. good. So I, I definitely appreciate you for coming out. So this wraps up another episode of Day in My Tech Life. My name is Simone B, also known as Bees. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. See you on the next one.